Ryan craned his head around the wall once more. He scanned the top of the barricade and what little of the bunkhouse he could see. There was no sign of movement anywhere. Which he took to mean that the sec men were already all in position, forewarned by the clatter of gunfire from the heart of the ville. Their object was clear. To keep the would-be escapees pinned inside the ville long enough for the rest of the sec men to arrive in force at the rear. Then it would just be a matter of mop-up, single bullets behind the ears of those still breathing. Ryan had left the Remington back in the wag. He figured it would be nothing but a hindrance in the coming fight. It was too long, too slow to come on point, and too slow to reload. He thumped open the Ruger's loading gate, making sure that every chamber was loaded with an unfired cartridge. He had no idea how many of the opposition were hiding in among the berms, but based on the segment he had seen on the way into the ville and the size of the bunkhouse, it figured to be an even fight. We're all good. Good. Those of you that are unarmed, stay behind and pick up blasters from the dead segment. Then you can move ahead. Poe, we can't wait until we reach the gate to start moving the wags forward. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. So I told the drivers to head into the barricades as soon as we gain some ground. That way, we can defend the wags using the berms for cover if more sec men come at us from behind. Good idea. We go at them straight on until I give the signal. Then we split wide, right and left. The idea is to flank them, make them bunch up in the middle of the barriers. When you've cleared out an area, wave the wags forward. We've got to move fast. This can't turn into a pitched battle, or we're all going to get chilled. It's got to be hit and get. Okay. Go! Ryan and the others sprinted into the center of the road, running right into the muzzles of the guns along the berm. Slugs zipped past Ryan's body and struck the ground on either side of him. He didn't think about them, not how close or how far away they landed. All he thought about was getting to the breakoff point as quickly as he could. When he was close enough to see the faces of the men shooting at him, he cut right, his long legs pumping. One of the sec men abruptly rose from behind the concrete cover, thinking he had a clear shot at the dark-haired escaping in front. The first shots fired by Ryan's crew sent the sec man toppling over backwards. For a few seconds, all firing stopped as the Baron Sekman took in the sight of one of their own, suddenly dead. As the crew members following Ryan peeled off, left and right, Poet and Abe knelt in the middle of the road. With the covering fire, Ryan had no problems reaching the far end of the first berm. Three Sekman were crouching, spread out to his left along the inside of the wall. They never even got off a shot. Ryan kept going, vaulting over the next berm. Bullets blistered at him, sparking up the top of the barrier, clipping free chips of concrete. Shielding his good eye with his hand, he dropped down to cover. So far, the sec men were either dying or pulling back. As anticipated, they were playing the stall game. To Ryan, it looked like there were another four or five of the staggered walls between him and the gate. Good. The legs are creeping up. Turning, he motioned for the crew members spread out behind him to stay where they were and wait for him to make his move. He then ran along the front of the wall toward the opening that allowed traffic to pass. Ryan rounded the corner with the Blackhawk up and blazing in his fist. Those who survived closed ranks and tried to return fire, but Ryan was already across the open roadway to the safety of the berm on the other side. Straight ahead of him, he could see Poet and Abe hurtling over the barrier, and when he looked back the way he had come, he could see the rest of the crew jumping the berm there as well. Just as he planned, the frontal assault had allowed the crew to get into killing position on the flanks of the main Sekman force. As he ran down the narrow traffic lane, Ryan scooped up one of the dead Sekman's weapons. It was a KG-99 auto rifle that had been converted to select fire. He advanced along the ends of the openings in the berms, stolen machine pistol in hand. The remaining Sekman were in full retreat now, no longer even attempting to put up a fight. At the edge of the last burn, Ryan stopped and again took cover. Beyond it, the surviving Sekman had their backs up against the mesh of the wire gate. One of them was fumbling with the gate's bolt, trying to get it open. Put the blasters down! If you lay them down, you can walk away! Enough! Hold your fire! I'm gonna see if there's anybody hiding. Well, anybody left? No. That wasn't a firefight, it was an execution. I'm opening the gate now. The captured wags rounded the final barrier and drove through the now opened gate. Poet caught up with Ryan near the five sec men. They weren't only dead, they'd also been torn to shreds. Why do you think they fired at us? 
You gave them a way out. Who knows? Maybe blind panic. Maybe they were used to dealing with people who don't keep their word. It doesn't matter either way. The important thing is, we've got a convoy to catch. Graphic Audio. A movie in your mind.